All right, because of Winn-Dixie, chapter one. My name is India Opal Baloney, and the last summer, my daddy, the preacher, sent me to the store for a box of macaroni and cheese, some white rice, and two tomatoes, and I came back with a dog. This is what happened. I walked into the produce section of the Winn-Dixie grocery store to pick out my two tomatoes, and I almost bumped right into the store manager. He was standing there all red-faced, screaming and waving his arms around. Who let a dog in here? He kept shouting. Who let a dirty dog in here? First, I didn't see a dog. There were just a lot of vegetables rolling around on the floor, tomatoes and onions and green peppers. And there was what seemed like a whole army of Winn-Dixie employees running around waving their arms just the same way the store manager was waving his. And then the dog came running around the corner. He was a big dog and ugly, and he looked like he was having a real good time. His tongue was hanging out, and he was wagging his tail. He skidded to a stop and smiled right at me. I had never before in my life seen a dog smile, but that is what he did. He pulled back his lips and showed me all his teeth. Then he wagged his tail so hard that he knocked some oranges off a display, and they went rolling everywhere, mess, uh, mixing in with the tomatoes and onions and green peppers. The manager screamed, somebody grab that dog. The dog went running over to the manager, wagging his tail and smiling. He stood up on his hind legs. You could tell that all he wanted to do was get face to face with the manager and thank him for the good time he was having in the produce department. But somehow he ended up knocking the manager over and the manager must have been having a bad day because lying there on the floor right in front of everybody, he started to cry. The dog leaned over him real concerned and licked his face. Please, said the manager, somebody call the pound. Wait a minute, I hollered. That's my dog. Don't call the pound. All the Winn-Dixie employees turned around and looked at me, and I knew I had done something big, and maybe stupid too, but I couldn't help it. I couldn't let that dog go to the pound. Here, boy, I said. The dog stopped licking the manager's face and put his ears up in the air and looked at me like he was trying to remember where he knew me from. Here, boy, I said again, and then I figured... Uh, da, da, da. And then I figured that the dog was probably just like everybody else in the world, that he would want to get called by a name. Only I didn't know what his name was. So I just said the first thing that came into my head. I said, here, Winn-Dixie. And that dog came trotting over to me, just like he had been doing his whole, it, his whole life. The manager sat up and gave me a hard stare, like maybe I was making fun of him. It's his name, I said, honest. The manager said, don't you know not to bring a dog into a grocery store? Yes, sir, I told him. He got in by mistake. I'm sorry, it won't happen again. Come on, Winn-Dixie, I said to the dog. I started walking and he followed along behind me as I went out of the produce department and down the cereal aisle and past all the cashiers and out the door. Once we were safe outside, I checked him over real careful and he didn't look that good. He was big but skinny. You could see his ribs. And there were bald patches all over him, places where he didn't have any fur at all. Mostly, he looked like a big piece of old brown carpet that had been left out in the rain. You're a mess, I told him. I bet you don't belong to anybody. He smiled at me. He did that thing again where he pulled back his lips and showed me his teeth. He smiled so big that it made him sneeze. It was like he was saying, I know I'm a mess. Isn't it funny? It's hard not to immediately fall in love with a dog who has a good sense of humor. Come on, I told him. Let's see what the preacher has to say about you. And the two of us, me and Winn-Dixie, started walking home. Chapter two. That summer I found when dixie was also the summer me and the preacher moved to Naomi, Florida, so he could be the new preacher at the Open Arms Baptist Church of Naomi. My daddy is a good preacher and a nice man, but sometimes it's hard for me to think about him as my daddy because he spends so much time preaching or thinking about preaching or getting ready to preach. 
And so in my mind, I think of him as the preacher. Before I was born, he was a missionary in India, and that is how I got my first name. But he calls me by my second name, Opal, because that was his mother's name, and he loved her a lot. Anyway, while me and when Dixie walked home, I told him how I got my name, and I told him how I had just moved to Naomi. I also told him about the preacher and how he was a good man, even if he was too distracted with sermons and prayers and suffering people to go grocery shopping. Did you do the passenger if there's two boxes, I know I have a choice. I did the, now. say it again, it was the. Adaptive oral reading or adaptive oral reading passenger only. I think it's the it's first one. one. But I don't remember clicking anything. I just remember doing benchmark and it would. Yeah, but after benchmark, do I click benchmark? It, it gives me choices. Adaptive oh. oral reading or adaptive oral reading passages only. Okay. Can you click only, both? Right? Oh. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure. I don't, I don't remember clicking those. They would just log in and I would just click start test. Um, okay. Uh, da, 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 da. But you know what? I told Winn-Dixie, you are a suffering dog. So maybe he will take uh, to you right away. Maybe he'll let me keep you. When dixie looked up at me and wagged his tail. He was kind of limping like something was wrong with one of his legs. And I have to admit, he stunk bad. He was an ugly dog, but already I loved him with all my heart. When we got to the Friendly Corners trailer park, I told Win dixie that he had to behave right and be quiet because this was an all-adult trailer park. And the only reason I got to live in it was because uh, the preacher was a preacher and I was a good, quiet kid. I was what the Friendly Corners trailer park manager, Mr. Alfred, called an exception. And I told Winn-Dixie he had to act like an exception, too. Specifically, I told him not to pick any fights with Mr. Alfred's cats or Miss Detweller's little yappy Yorkie dog, Samuel. Winn-Dixie looked up at me while I was telling him everything, and I swear he understood. Sit, I told him when we got to my trailer. He sat right down. He had good manners. Stay here, I told him. I'll be right back. The preacher was sitting in the living room, working at the little fold-out table. He had papers spread all around him, and he was rubbing his nose, which always means he's thinking hard. Daddy, I said. Hmm? He said back. Daddy, do you know how you always tell me that we should help those less fortunate than ourselves? Mm-hmm, he said. He rubbed his nose and looked around at his papers. Well, I said, I found a less fortunate at the grocery store. Is that right? He said. Yes, sir, I told him. I stared at the preacher really hard. Sometimes he reminds me of a turtle hiding inside its shell, in there thinking about things and not even sticking his head out into the world. Daddy, I was wondering, could this less fortunate, could he stay with us for a while? Finally, the preacher looked up at me. Opal, he said, what are you talking about? I found a dog. I told him, and I want to keep him. No dogs, the preacher said. We've talked about this before. You don't need a dog. I know what I said. I know I don't need a dog, but this dog needs me. Look, I said. I went to the trailer door and hollered, when Dixie, when Dixie's ears shot up in the air and he grinned and sneezed and then he came limping up the steps and into the trailer and put his head right in the preacher's lap, right on top of a pile of papers. The preacher looked at when Dixie. He looked at his ribs and his matted up fur and the places where he was bald. The preacher's nose wrinkled up. Like I said, the dog smelled pretty bad. When Dixie looked up at the preacher, he pulled back his lips and showed the preacher all of his crooked yellow teeth and wagged his tail and knocked some of the preacher's papers off the table. Then he sneezed and some more papers fluttered to the floor. What did you call this dog? The preacher asked. When Dixie, I whispered. I was afraid to say anything too loud. I could see that when Dixie was having a good effect on the preacher, he was making him poke his head out of his shell. Well, said the preacher. 
He's a stray if I've ever seen one. He put down his pencil and scratched Winn-Dixie behind the ears. And a less fortunate, too, that's for sure. Are you looking for a home? The preacher asked real soft to Winn-Dixie. Winn-Dixie wagged his tail. Well, the preacher said, I guess you found one. Chapter 3. I started in on Winn-Dixie right away, trying to clean him up. First, I gave him a bath. I used the garden hose and some baby shampoo. He stood still for it, but I could tell he didn't like it. He looked insulted, and the whole time he didn't show me his teeth or wag his tail once. After he was all washed and dried, I brushed him good. I used my own hairbrush and worked real hard at the knots and patches of fur stuck together. He didn't mind being brushed. He wiggled his back like it felt pretty good. The whole time I was working on him, I was talking to him, and he listened. I told him how we were alike. See, I said, you don't have any family, and neither do I. I've got the preacher, of course, but I don't have a mama. I mean, I have one, but I don't know where she is. She left when I was three years old, and I can't hardly remember her. And I bet you don't remember your mama much either. So we're almost like orphans. When Dixie looked straight at me when I said that to him, like he was feeling relieved to finally have someone understand his situation, I nodded my head at him and went on talking. I don't even have any friends because I had to leave them all behind when we moved here from, uh, wow, oh, Waitley. Waitley's up in North Florida. Have you ever been to North Florida? When Dixie looked down at the ground like he was trying to remember if he had. You know what I said? Ever since we moved here, I've been thinking about my mama extra, extra hard. More than I ever did when I was in Waitley. When Dixie twitched his ears and raised his eyebrows. I think the preacher thinks about my mama all the time, too. He's still in love with her. I know, because I heard the ladies at the church in, the Waitley, in Waitley talking about him. They said he was still hoping she'll come back. But he doesn't tell me that. He won't talk to me about her at all. I want to know more about her, but I'm afraid to ask the preacher. I'm afraid he'll get mad at me. When Dixie looked at me hard, like he was trying to say something. What I said? He stared at me. You think I should make the preacher tell me about her? When Dixie looked at me so hard, he sneezed. I'll think about it, I said. When I was done working on him, when Dixie looked a whole lot better. He still had his bald spots, but the fur that he did have, um, the fur that he did have cleaned up nice. He was all shiny and soft, and you could still see his ribs, but I intended to feed him good, and that would take care of that. I couldn't do anything about his crooked yellow teeth because he got into a sneezing fit every time I started brushing them with my toothbrush, and I finally had to give up. But for the most part, he looked a whole lot better, and so I took him into the trailer and showed him to the preacher. That's what I said. Mm, he said he was working on a sermon and kind of muttering to himself. Daddy, I want to show you the new Win dixie The preacher put down his pencil and rubbed his nose and finally he looked up. Well, he said, smiling real big at Win dixie Well, now, don't you look handsome? Win dixie smiled back at the preacher. He went over and put his head on the, in the preacher's lap. He smells nice, too, said the preacher. He rubbed Win dixies head and looked into his eyes. Daddy, I said, real quick before I lost all my nerve. I've been talking to Winn-Dixie. Is that right? The preacher said. He scratched Winn-Dixie's head. I've been talking to him, and he agreed with me that since I'm 10 years old, you should tell me 10 things about my mama. Just 10 things, that's all. The preacher stopped rubbing Winn-Dixie's head and held real still. I could, I could see him thinking about pulling his head back into his shell. One thing for each year I've been alive, I told him. Please? When Dixie looked up at the preacher and kind of gave him a nudge with his nose, the preacher sighed. He said to Win Dixie, I should have guessed you were going to be trouble. Then he looked at me. Come on, Opal, he said. Sit down and I will tell you ten things about your mama. All right, let's stop there. All right, go ahead, put your bookmark in there.